guys, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about my grandmas since women are in the headlines all the time now. My two grandmas were born before women even had the right to vote. My first grandma, Rady Caroline Goodwin Alloway Edmondson, 18... 94. She was born into rural Indiana that's nothing but farms and coal mines. So my second grandma was born Goldie Gladys Odessa Williams Mayfield Burdett and she was born in 1898. They didn't get, women didn't get the right to vote to 1920. Rady, Grandma Rady, but she was like about six years old, I would imagine. She was in the back of a wagon drawn by horses and she was knocked out of the wagon and the back wheel ran over her arm, broke her arm. Now, I don't know, this is rural Indiana, probably at the turn of the century, 1900s. I don't know if these rural doctors were educated real well, I'm sure. The Civil War is like 30, what, 30, 40 years out. So a lot of these doctors probably got a lot of their practice during the Civil War. But they fixed my grandma's arm. They set it three times. They had to break it two times from the initial breaking, and it never set right. In fact, she eventually got gangrene on her arm, and they knew how to treat gangrene from the Civil War. I don't know if her, her arm was shattered so bad, or they just didn't know how to set a, a broken arm. I mean, there were some relatives in my family tree that died from a broken arm. But Grandma Rady had no use of that arm for the rest of her life. She couldn't pick it up from the shoulder or the elbow, but her fingers worked. So I, I would see her as a young child. She'd pick that hand up, put it on the table, put something in that hand and hold it, and then she may cut it, or she was washing dishes, she'd wash it with the other one. So she had like this handicap just because she had a broken arm. Her arm was useless. Now, Grandma Rady, she meets uh, Grandpa Alloway, and there was kind of like a romantic story behind how they had met and got married. The truth is, it looks like Grandpa Alloway, he was born in Minnesota. Great Grandpa and Great Grandma lived in Iowa. It looks like Great Grandpa went up to Minnesota for work. He was a miner, and he went up there for work. Grandpa Alloway was born, and they stayed up there for like two years. They went back to Iowa. Grandpa lived there. I have him in a census in Iowa, and then 10 years later, he's in Indiana, and he's married to Grandma. They got married in 1912. Now, one of, one of the stories was that Grandma got pregnant before, and she had to have a shotgun wedding. When I look at when she got married and her first son was born, it's like exactly nine months. So she had to been right there married, I mean, pregnant, right when she got married, because, you know... Nine months later, she had her first child. I can't say that Grandpa didn't catch him fooling around in the haystack. He told Grandpa Alloway, hey, you're going to fool with her, you're going to marry her. Now, usually if they have a shotgun wedding, that means the, the guy didn't want to marry her, and so they forced them to get married because she ended up pregnant. So I don't know. I mean, Grandpa married her, and he stayed with her until he died. They had seven children. They had three boys and four girls. And she had a, usually, when they had babies back then, it's every two years, unless something happened and dad's gone. Because if the dad's there, it's every two years that babies are born. I think women must have had some kind of understanding to not get pregnant back to back. They probably told the husband, I'm in you know, baby mold, and I can't have sex for a year. It's usually the second year they get pregnant and have their baby. So all the babies are like that. Now there's like three years, and I know at one point there's four years. I do know that Grandpa Alloway would go to Virginia to get work in the coal mine. So he would leave, 
go find work wherever he could, come back, grandma would get pregnant, you know, he'd leave again. And there are some bigger gaps between her children. But when her youngest son is three, Grandpa Alloway is hit by a train and killed. There was a lot of tragic accidents back in these days. There was regulations were really bad. People got killed over simple little things. And you think, well, how, how did Grandpa get killed by a train? Well, in southern Indiana, one of the things I learned in school when you came to a railroad crossing was to stop, look, and listen. That's what we always, always did. Because some of the railroad tracks in Indiana, they have no flashing lights, they don't have any armed guard, and they only have the railroad crossing that had reflectors on them. So when you drove up there, you would see it. Now, Indiana's real hilly. It's got a lot of overgrowth. So you come up on a railroad track, you may not see it right away, and you may not hear it. You've got to really listen. So he was killed by a train. Now, Grandma Rady, she got a little money because he was a coal miner. And I think her oldest son was probably, I think he was around 17 when his dad dies. So a lot of the kids were old enough that they could work or, you know, they could kind of take care of themselves. But she did have this toddler. Normally in that era, women didn't really work outside the home at all. You know, they didn't get paid. There weren't professional women, especially in rural parts of uh, America. These women did not work. They were just baby-making machines. They stayed home. They had babies, and they did domestic chores. That was it. And that was no exception for Grandma. In this era, you know, nine times out of ten, when your husband dies and you've got all these kids, especially a little one, they get married pretty much... You know, they have a year that they mourn. By two years, they're married again, okay? But Grandma Rady didn't do that. I don't know if it, if she voted when women's rights came up that she was allowed to vote. I know for the history of Indiana, it was a big turnout for women in the 1920, for the first election for women, it was a big turnout. In fact, they said more women turned out than men in a lot of voting booths. I have no record that she voted, either one of my grandmas, that they voted. There's no record of that. Maybe she said, hey, I'm not going to marry him. You know, why do I have to get married? If you think of her logic, why would she say that? She's got a three-year-old, and women don't really work. She's a farm woman, woman, really, and all she knows is domestic chores and having babies. Grandma Rady was like 40, in her early 40s. She was still capable of getting pregnant. And that might have been one of the factors. Maybe she said, I'm handicapped. I had seven babies. I don't want to get married. And, you know, all my babies are pretty much grown, you know, where they can take care of themselves. So well, she probably didn't want to go through that. She doesn't get married for 10 years. By then, my uncle is like 13, and that's the only one she has at home. Now, that was one grandma, and how she, you think about it, she kind of went against what they said, that women should get married and, you know, men should support them. She was out there doing domestic chores. She ironed for people. She washed clothes for people. She cleaned houses of people. She babysat. There's times I got my mom's diary from like in that era. They canned goods, you know, fruits, vegetables they canned. They may have bartered with a farmer and, and he might have said, hey, I got, you know, X amount of bushes of tomatoes. I need to get so many of them canned. They canned them, and then they got so many to keep for themselves, and they canned the others for the farmer. So they had some where they could sell, some that they could keep through the winter. So I think a lot of that is what they did, barter. They didn't really have money money, you know. Now, it's funny because when she got married the second time, she's in her early 50s. She's still able to get pregnant. But I have no record of Grandma Rady ever getting pregnant 
ever having a miscarriage or a child died after grandpa dies, her first husband. I know grandma would seek out a witch, and that's what she called them. They were witches, and she had gone with to them for treatments of stuff. Now, I know for a fact that herbs, even aromatherapy, there are some things that they tell you, do not touch this, do not ingest it if you are pregnant or think you might be pregnant because they, what they, they're, they're called to bring on your period. If you're pregnant, you're just, you know, you're not going to be pregnant anymore. Those have been around probably since the beginning of time. And a, a woman that they call witch, she knows about these herbs. She knows about her local area, how, how to boil weeds and make a, a, you know, a salve out of it for maybe burns or, you know. So a lot of times these rural people didn't really maybe trust the doctors or they'd rather go to a witch and she's using natural stuff. So maybe grandma got something from a witch that she called a witch, <laughs> prevented her pregnancy or when she missed, she knew she could take something because she's never had any other children. She stayed with him till she died in 1976. And I think Ben died a few years after that. Grandma never lived in a house that had plumbing. She had an outhouse and she had a pump outside that she had to carry water. And they had coal that they carried in and they had a stove in the middle of the room, in one room. Grandma was extraordinary because she went through a time that women had no rights. She took it upon herself to pay her own way, you know, by doing what she knew, which, with, which was domestic chores. And she got paid for it, and she survived on her own and, not, and didn't have to depend on a man. Now, my second grandma, the story's a little different. 